Good evening, folks. Uh, this is Diego Ochoa, superintendent of the Hollister School District. I'm going to take my face covering down so that those parents that are watching tonight uh, for this parent town hall and haven't seen me before know what I look like without the black face covering. So um, nice to see everybody. And I wanted to start by um, talking for just a minute about why our school district is doing this event and why we had one last Friday and why we'll have another one this Friday uh, coming up. It's because we are very interested in bringing parents to the table so that we can hear the opinions and the questions and the concerns of parents because we are about to start to do something that has literally never been done before um, in our educational careers, which is to take 600 employees and the educational program for 6,000 kids as young as four, year, four years old and to figure out how to do that in an effective way using distance learning to start the year. So it's a big job and um, it's one that we have been preparing for for months and we're excited about that. And I have with me tonight three of my coworkers three really awesome people uh, and I want to let those parents know who haven't met me um, just get to know me a little bit better as an educator um, I have been an educator for 22 years I taught special education as a teacher I taught fourth fifth and sixth grade I have another fourth grade teacher with me today um, and I've been all over the state uh, assistant principal and high school principal for 10 years uh, and this is now my seventh year as a superintendent um, and I'm just really excited to be here in Hollister uh, I'm also a parent of a Hollister School District student he will be in kindergarten at Lad Lane Elementary School and I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old and so I'm very invested in what we're doing here on a personal level uh, and I'm excited to be with you guys tonight. So with that, I'll pass it over to my coworker here, Scott. Hi everyone, uh, this is what I look like in case if you haven't met me yet. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, be here in Hollister. I love being here in our town and uh, I'm the lucky person that gets to be the principal of the Accelerated Achievement Academy. And uh, it's an exceptional learning environment with a lot of great kids and teachers and families. And, it's a pleasure to work with them, but we're also really fortunate to be on the Calaveras campus, and that's another great community of learners and teachers and kids, and uh, love working with them and, and on the same campus together. And just getting to work with Mr. Woods, good principal out there too. So uh, my family and I live in Hollister. My children are both through the Hollister School District uh, through the system. Uh, we've been a lot involved in a lot of sports and stuff, so I've probably seen a lot of you guys on the weekends running around. And uh, we moved here about eight years ago, and it's uh, been the best thing we've ever done. I love being here in Hollister, love our school district, and uh, very thankful for this opportunity to be here today. Thanks. Awesome. My name is Caroline Calero, and I am the Director of Educational Services. I'm fortunate to be here in the um, position that I'm in. It's an exciting time. I've been in education 29 years. Please don't add up the age factor, <laughs> um, thir 13 of which I was a teacher, an elementary teacher, and um, the other years I've been an administrator in various positions, assistant principal at a middle school, assistant principal at a high school, high school principal, ELD coordinator. Um, my passion is really making sure that all students have access to a rigorous, good curriculum and instruction that provides them the opportunities that they deserve. So that's the backbone of of our department. Um, I have, I live on a compound with a big family and we're big and loud and together on everything and it's a, it's a joy to live life that way and to be able to go home to my second family which is um, at home. My first family here is at Hollister because we spent a lot of time doing the hard work together with teachers and principals. Um, but it's just a pleasure to work in this environment where all, from the top to the bottom, everybody cares about the students and wants what's best for them. It's a pleasure to be part of that team, just like our okay. teacher here. Um, I'm Mary Viegas. I was born and raised here, went away to college. I was a Husky, 
as a student, and now I get to be a Husky teacher. Oh, really? um, I absolutely love what I do. This will be my 18th year. I'm very passionate about giving our kids the best quality education possible, no matter how it comes across their little faces, whether it's digital or in person, whatever it is, making it the best it can possibly be. Um, my family is all here also, so my kids have gotten to grow up with great grandparents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins all over the place. Um, I am looking forward to meeting this challenge, and my own two children are teenagers now. I have an eighth grader and a high schooler, and they have both been successful at distance learning, so I'm sure that our children will rise to the occasion. I just get excited hearing them give those explanations and it's, you know, we've worked together now. This is my third school year in the district and I didn't know that you went to Arl Harding. I sure did. You, you actually and a lot of your coworkers, a lot of people that work for our school. It's district, where my heart is. They, they, <laughs> Down in Cal I was at Calaveras for 11 years as a teacher wow. and then I moved to Arl Harden and wow. Those kids are my people. Yeah. <laughs> I love those two schools. Um, yeah. One of the cool things about tonight's event is that it's connected to some emails and some messages and some surveys that we sent out to families. And believe it or not, in one day, we got over 30 new emails with questions. So what I'm holding up for families here is a, a document that uh, is a written document that answers all of those questions. And after tonight, we're gonna to send it to everybody's email in the district, so you all get it. Um, and all of your questions tonight are gonna to be answered either through this document, or you can also call the school district at 831-630-6320. And we have our coordinator of educational services, Michelle McCown, she's just off screen, she's over my left shoulder. <laughs> So she's going to pick up the phone if you call with any other questions. Um, and in order to get us kicked off tonight, I'm going to ask our technology staff. I have um, our lead technology specialist here with us, Brandon Johnson and Manny Guzman, one of our district uh, technology specialists. They're helping us produce the event. And they're going to project a document that we're going to basically explain to parents. Um, it's a visual that one of my coworkers here, um, Caroline Calero, put together to help visually explain to parents what is distance learning going to be like. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to you, Caroline, okay. and talk to them for a couple of minutes about the visual itself, and then we'll switch over and take their questions. Sounds good. First of all, Educational Services really is committed to working closely with the sites um, so that all students have access to rigorous, engaging curriculum, no matter what the circumstances. This document helps kind of break down what that might look like in a distance learning environment, other than, you know, we're normally used to a classroom setting where we know that that's happening, but now we're trudging through new waters and we want to really spell it out and provide you with some guarantees and consistencies. The guarantees and consistencies are basically in five areas. The scheduling, consistent schedules, you can expect Consistent Google Classroom setup so that when you get on or your, your our little students get on, they can they know how to navigate that because it's set up in a way that's pretty consistent. Although the teachers have their own flair and they have their own assignments, the basic formatting is easy to navigate because it's consistent. Digital resources, we will commit to specific um, high leverage kinds of platforms that allow teachers to teach um, in the way that they need to teach and have students interact with the content in ways that allow them to be engaged and involved. But those will be consistent. We heard loud and clear from our families and from our teachers and even the students that they need to have things be a little bit more consistent because it helps them navigate and access the learning and show what they know. Um, accessible curriculum is always something that we really are striving to have available to all students, families, and teachers. And we have invested quite a bit in, um, in some basic uh, core curriculum components that I'll, we'll go through a little bit more deeply. And finally, um, communication. You can expect regular communication. 
So when we talk about the schedules, grade level schedules will be consistent. They will be regular, um, predictable, and we will take attendance. The other um, piece is the Google Classroom. There's a cover page called the Stream page. That's where you get to go in as a parent and look at the snapshot of the week. What's my students in class learning, the live learning with the teacher? How's that going to look and how's it going to progress? Quick snapshots, you know what to expect, and you know what your child needs to bring to class to be ready. The other side of that is, is the classroom tab. On the classroom tab, that will be the daily assignments so that it's very clear. This is what I need to do today. This is what I need to do tomorrow. This is what I need to do the following day. And we'll have some set ways of naming um, what these things look like on the page so that you and your student can really um, be successful. We want students to be um, self-directed learners. And if we set things up in a way that's very clear and accessible, they'll be independent. I'm sure you want that too. Um, digital resources, we have um, our Google Suite, which is, there's a certain number of kinds of apps on there that um, really help teachers um, facilitate and present learning. We also have um, a school tube, which we will be sharing with our teachers, and then they will be able to have students, students can read and record and share that with their teachers. So it, school tube helps facilitate more of an interactive approach. Um, and then Footsteps to Brilliance, that's our bread and butter for our early literacy, and those students will need to be reading all the time. And we will be calling if, they're, if we see a student falling behind in their reading, because that's critical. Of course, training, parent education, communication about what these provide and how you use them is a part of what we're going to be rolling out. Accessible curriculum, we have invested heavily. Beginning in June, we planned ahead um, and we saw this coming and we thought we need to make sure that we have teachers have the tools that they need and that they're spending time really focusing on the student learning and not trying to reinvent the wheel and build everything from scratch. So they have curriculum embedded resources that are digital, that are interactive, for instance, in sync with Eureka Math. Um, these are short clip videos that students can watch and rewatch. There's interactive PDFs where students can write their thinking and teachers can write their responding in real time. Um, interactive manipulatives that students can use from home so that we don't have to count beans or whatever it is that you have. everybody has to find something at home. Um, and we have this in our English language arts programs too. So we're going to support you and the teachers and the students in really learning how to use these tools so that learning can be interactive and engaging. And finally, our communication. What can you expect? Regular communication. These include things like the Google Classroom emails. We're going to have a campaign to make sure every student is on email, their parents have emails, they have access. We're here to help you get there. Um, direct feedback on written assignments, progress reports will happen, report cards are going to continue to happen. And then we're going to have parent education in two big areas. Area one will be how to build a partnership with the school in, in supporting your child's learning. And area two will be how to use the technology. So in a nutshell, we want you to have consistent, we want to have consistencies to ensure that you have access and ease of use. And we have five guarantees, schedules, Google Classroom, digital resources, accessible curriculum, and communication. And of course, with regular good teachers here in Hollister School District, we plan to move forward. But we, it, it's all really about our teachers, and we're very proud to have one of them here. Thank you for that, Caroline. You did boom, it. boom, boom, boom. You figured out how to explain something that she and her team and our principals and teachers have been working on for four months. All I did was say, just turn it into a three-minute presentation. So you did it. <laughs> and we've had how many hours of conversations you on can, this, though, Scott, at the, at the principals' meeting? <laughs> over and over again. Um, I'm going to start us off with a, a super important question from a parent. It's right on the front page of our, of our uh, FAQs, our Frequently Asked Questions. What's what supplies will be offered to families who are unable to afford supplies? That's a great question. And I want families to know that if your child needs a 
book to write in if your child needs pencils or pens or erasers or folders. Um, your schools are going to provide those materials, just like we would in any regular school year. Um, what will be different this year is you'll drive up and you'll pick it up at one of our drive through uh, events. So it won't be like uh, in a regular classroom where your teacher gives you in those things. In your pencil box on your yeah. desk. That kind of <laughs> yeah, you'll still get those things, but you'll get them via a drive through So it will be different, but we're definitely going to get those supplies over. So that was an easy one. I took that one. Um, I got a question here, and we have a teacher sitting with us, so I'm going to ask this question. Uh, we came to an agreement with our teachers that teachers will actually be able to choose to work from their classroom at the school or to work from their home. And so it's, it's up to uh, each teacher to decide. And, um, and I think what's really great about that is it will allow our teachers who want to come to campus and be in their classroom where they have supplies and materials that help them, that they'll be able to do that. And then for our other teachers who have their own reasons for working from home, that are family reasons and that are technology reasons, then they have that option as well. So, um, Mary, what can you share with the with parents about that? You know, what what are you thinking about? What, what I you know about? that choice was very important for us as teachers because of extenuating circumstances. So that is yeah. very appreciated. Yeah. Um, I know that several of my colleagues who are planning to work from home, myself included, have created office space. Yeah. I will have a whiteboard with a cork board. I will have motivational sayings. I will, um, we will sing. We will move around. Yeah. We will. It'll, I'm, the goal is to make our digital world as much like the in-person classroom as possible, whether it's at an in-home office or whether it's from a classroom. And you know what? I'm glad you said that because I think a lot of parents are out there wondering, you know. Can teachers really set up a classroom in their home? And I've seen it. I've seen that teachers have done it, and and we're absolutely. We prepared. are not shy. I <laughs> sing in my bedroom with my whiteboard and my corkboard, and we stand up and sit down and move around, and it's just as if I was standing at the front of the classroom yeah. um, teaching my kids. So yes, it can be done. Uh, several of us are already making that happen. Thank you for that. We got a question about schedules, and, and this is our first phone question. Uh, Mrs. McCown is back there answering the phone, so thank you to the first parent that called in. And it's, when will schedules be sent to students? That's a good question, and it's going to be in about two weeks, and let me explain to you why. Because what we're doing is we are creating a system where kids will have schedules based on their grade levels, and, and there's a reason for that. So if you take a school like Calaveras AAA, they have about 750 students. So if I have all 750 students start school at the same time and students have trouble getting online, then it creates a problem with us being able to help kids digitally get online because they're all trying to do it at the same time. But if I tell the principal I want your TK, kinder, and first grade to start at 8.30. Then I want your second and third grade to start at 9. And I want your fourth and fifth grade to start at 9.30. Then I've basically broken it up into three separate groups that are all starting at different times so that the adults who are working behind the scenes can help the teacher and the parents get their child online. So that's, that's going to take us a couple of weeks. Uh, our teachers actually report for the first time on August 11th officially. Um, many of them are home right now working um, even during their quote unquote summer. Um, but you but know what? It's fun. It is. Most, we like it. <laughs> so we're excited. Um, but yes, we are working on our vacation, most of us. Yeah. All right, next question How is the Hollister School District going to address learning loss? Ms. Calero, you're the director of Ed Services Talk. Talk briefly about how we're going to address learning loss. First and foremost, we need to know um, where our students are um, and start the year out with a type of an assessment to really um, figure out where they are and what their needs are. We do have those identified in early literacy. It's um, a program where we assess students and they are pinpointed in their exact area of need and lessons are provided in small group instruction. 
so that we can regain and recuperate the learning loss. In mathematics, we have um, a specialized, our Eureka Math, we have in sync now, where teachers can provide small group instruction um, using the tools that are available to them through, it, through the Eureka Math program. Our schedules reflect small group instruction time, and that is where we really address each student's basic levels so that we can keep them moving. And for the ones that are behind learning loss, we have those types of programs that are designed to accelerate it. And R.O. Hardin is a perfect example where they've accelerated students um, two years worth of growth in one year. Yeah, many of our fourth grade students last year made that two year jump in reading and or math or both. It goes with some, it goes with ongoing monitoring to make sure that they are progressing too. And I've got a fun question for our teacher and our principal. Drum roll. Will there be homework? <laughs> this is an easy one for the two of you. I'll start with you, Mary, and then I'll pass it over to Scott. Um, because our online time will be less than what we would have in an in-person setting, if your student does not complete the work for the day, then yes, it would become homework. Um, every assignment in the Google Classroom will have a begin date and an end date. So. The goal is to help the students move along, but should the time expire, then yes, they would need to do some of it on their own. Because what you're saying is, if I'm your teacher and I give you 10 assignments, you owe me 10 assignments. Correct. You have to do 10 assignments for me. You're the principal, you're working with different teachers, you, your school is fourth grade through eighth grade. Right. Talk about the kind of homework your school might do. So, so our school um, looks at homework as um, practice and the stuff that we want students to be able to have mastery in the classroom with the teacher and the instruction <clears throat> and then feel good about going home and practicing and stretching those skills. A lot of our homework is in math, reinforcing things we learned in the day through the direct lessons and some of the stuff we've done in class. We also expect our kids to read every day. And reading logs, yeah. And uh, we also are, are looking at um, some, some projects and things. Sometimes our, our uh, PBL units, our project-based learning stuff, there might be elements where kids at home will get together and work on some of their own answers for those things. And that's not dependent on the teacher instruction. That's based on student interaction, discussion, and, and their own research before they come back to share with the, their peers and with our teachers what they've learned or what they've seen. Yeah, and I think what's important about both of those answers is what they're saying is what I'm teaching you on a Monday I need you to get it done on Monday. I need you to work on it on Monday afternoon because on Tuesday, we're moving we're ahead. Forward. On Wednesday, we, we keep going. On Thursday, we keep going. So that's why the practice is so important. That's why the completion of the work is so important. So um, I think March through June for all of us felt a little bit like mm -hmm. we're kind of doing our best. We're trying, yes. but we knew it didn't feel like a regular school day. Well, when we come back in August, we're back in school, folks. This is school. You happen to be at your house, in your living room, or in your kitchen, but you are in school. So when the bell rings, it's time to let's get ready. Let's get in there and, and start working. Um, so I have another question for the principal. What happens if I just don't do my work? What happens if I just don't log in? What happens if I don't do my work? What happens if... I just don't get involved. Well, I'm, I'm going to steal something I just learned from Mary from her experience in summer school, and uh, our staff and I will be working on that just also. But uh, we're going to reach out. We're going to connect, not only with the student, but with the families. And we're going to make sure that we build in our instructional schedules time where we can meet with kids one-on-one -on -one or in small groups to make sure that the expectations are being met and that we're also meeting their needs and whatever we learn. Sometimes homework isn't done though for good reasons, like maybe they don't understand or they need some assistance. So we're gonna make sure we can tell the difference between a failure to get an assignment done or we need some extra And assistance. that's how the communication was helpful, both yeah. in the spring for myself and then also during my time with summer school. Um, I taught migrant summer school fully online. I, it was common for me to say, if you find yourself getting stuck, please reach out to me, or we had a weekly phone call so that then I could set up an independent uh, Google Meet with one or two students who were having the same struggle and do a reteach. 
the whole 30 didn't need it, but three or four might. And so um, building those times into our schedules. And as far as communication, we will communicate any way we can reach you. Um, my partners and I have set up a Google Voice phone number. We can text you, we can email, we use Class Dojo. Um, so we will use every platform available to us to be able to reach our families. Um, one thing I want parents to know is every single school in the district, all schools, will have a group of people who have different jobs, like for example, maybe a school secretary, or maybe a health clerk, or maybe an assistant principal, um, or maybe a library media specialist. And the principal at each school will be giving those employees the phone numbers of students and the emails of parents whose kids are not participating in school regularly. And we define that as three days. If you don't complete three assignments or if you don't complete three days of, of attendance, you will be getting phone calls from not just your child's teacher, because your child's teacher will also be calling and emailing. But I want our teachers to know, you're going to have a whole group of other people following up, sending emails, making phone calls. And when that process doesn't work, we will send assistant principals to the homes of children to go and find out what is going on academically because we are about to encounter a school year like one we've never seen and we don't want any children falling behind i think it's important too to know that we're not trying to catch you and get like it's not a like you're in trouble thing my son is a distance learner and i get alerts all day long if he's tardy to his online class or and you know then I can send him a little message to say hey bud it's time to get on you know you're a little behind today get moving it's because we care and we want to make sure that you're not stuck that your internet is not broken that your Chromebook didn't fall down and now the screen doesn't work so it's we want you to be there because we care about your learning so it's not catching you to be in trouble it's checking in and reaching out to make sure that you have everything that you need. Thank you for that. And we've got, thank you for all the parents that continue to call. We've got a couple of calls um, that we're gonna get to here in just a minute. I do wanna answer a question here that is, is this perfect for a superintendent to answer? Which is how much screen time will kids have each day? Too much screen time can be very harmful. And actually we're very cognizant of that. And so what we built into our schedule for the whole district was a combination of whole class instruction and small group instruction. Because whole class instruction will basically look like a group of 20 to 25 kids all on a screen with their teacher leading activities. So when that happens, that might be 30 minutes or 60 minutes of a child really looking only at a computer screen. And it's difficult to do that for seven hours straight. So we're not gonna require that. So we're actually gonna break the day up into different activities, different portions of 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 45 minutes, depending on the grade level, so that the children are not the entire day staring at a computer screen. Um, and I think depending on, on the grade level, it can be as much as, as five hours and other grade levels it may, might be three and a half hours. Um, I said earlier, my child's a kindergarten a student. You know, there's gonna be portions of the day where he has a, a physical book and he is reading a physical book. Uh, we talked to our, about our library media specialist we want to come up with a program to send books home with children mm -hmm. so that children have physical books. You know, I mentioned earlier about parents needing notebooks. We're going to assign your children writing work that's going to require them to actually physically have a pencil and paper and write. And so when that's happening, they won't be on a computer screen. When they're reading a book, they won't be on a computer screen. When they're doing a lot of our math activities, they won't necessarily be stuck to the computer. So I think it's going to be a really good balance where it's a combination of some screen time and then 
the other parts of the day not. They will all get their normal materials too. So we are issuing consumable workbooks and textbooks like we do every year, just differently like Mr. Ochoa said. I have a good one here for a superintendent. What about parents who don't have internet? Parents who don't have internet will receive a Wi-Fi hotspot. The district has a thousand devices that we will be getting out to families in the next 20 days. And those devices are basically, they kind of look almost like my phone in a way. You can see that where uh, it connects into whatever computer we give you. And it basically gives you high speed internet access by just connecting it to the computer. Um, so um, Ms. Villegas talked about her experience in summer school. And almost every student who was in that summer school had a Wi-Fi hotspot. So we already have about 150 that are out there, and we've got another uh, 1,000 waiting to be deployed out to families. So that's, that's going to be really good. Um, another question here, this one's for um, our teacher and our, our principal here, which is, will the children be able to work at their own pace? Could some children go faster? Could some children go slower uh, in terms of their work completion? You get kids that are not all at the same level, how do you how do you work the with that kind of situation? The beauty of our curriculum right now, uh, Benchmark Universe, is that we have access to every level of textbook in the Benchmark Universe online, and we very often will group students based on their need and their level. Um, each unit has a similar overlying theme. So if the fourth grade content is on government, so is the third grade, so is the second grade, so all the way through. So if your student is one who has that gap and needs to be met where they are, then I might assign the second or third grade text, but it's on the same content as the students who are at grade level are getting. Um, so they're still going to learn the information and we're going to just slowly close that gap and move them up yeah so you're actually able to differentiate it yes mm -hmm. that's awesome and google classroom makes that very easy to do we can have multiple classrooms with certain sets of students in them so that when we are doing small group instruction only the students who are using it the different curriculum then would be invited to that session and they would have their own classroom with their own set of uh, assignments tailored to their level. Caroline, I have a question for you, which is, what do these students' schedules look like? What are they, you know, are they flexible? Do they, what are the start times and end times look like? The start times and end times are staggered, like you described. Um, I think I would imagine in a household that may be helpful so that everything's not happening all at once. And on, on the district side, that's helpful. Um, they're predictable so that you can get into a groove with your, um, with your student, and so can the teachers. Um, the routines and structures are very important for students to be able to have continuous growth. Um, and it's a combination, of, and as Mr. Ochoa was saying, it's a combination of small group instruction, whole class live instruction, and some independent work that might be a preview or a pre-work before the next lesson, or it might be a practice and review or an extension project for the, for the lesson. So we, we're really trying to blend it so that students have, uh, they don't get into a monotony of a routine, but it is, a, it is a set scheduled routine. And I'll say it again, there will be attendance taken for each of these so that we can really make sure that we can be in communication with families and support students um, so that there is, um, they stay caught up and, and continue to learn. So the schedules are set, but they're multifaceted. One question here at the site level is, what kind of online platform will your teachers be using? Is it Google Classroom? Is it, uh, you know, as a parent, uh, of, of you have your own kids in school, you know, what, are the, what do you see being used with them and what do you think your teachers will be using uh, with your students? Our staff is really pleased uh, with the flexibility and strength of the Google platform. So we'll be using Google Classroom. 
And the um, curriculum that we've been able to get recently is going to really beef up our chances to use through Clever and through the portal and through the, the classroom um, online materials. And uh, kids are still getting their printable materials. And so I think between all of those together, um, curriculum isn't going to be a strength for us in the fall. And, and if you're talking general. about um, platform-wise, if you're talking about are we using Zoom, are we using Google Meet, uh, in that sense, uh, at R.O. Harden, we voted. And so all of the R.O. Harden teachers will be using Google Meet so that when we have our parent meeting and we're trying to show parents how to access what they need, it's the same across the board. So you don't have your kindergartner using Zoom, but your fourth graders using Google Meet, and then your third grader has something completely different. Yes. We're, we're trying to streamline that so that we're all on the same platform. That's awesome. If I could jump on that, something that Scott said, um, it's important that he used the word clever, and that's kind of uh, what we heard from parents through our uh, previous town halls and our when we were building our LCAP <laughs> back in the day. Already. Which was at least nine years ago. It was really only that six months our, ago. Like. We had a school plan that we were building, but we got some really good feedback, and the parents said, can you just make sure it's only one click away? Whatever I need to get to is just one click away. So that's kind of been our barometer. for, And um, Clever is the... The platform that allows everything on the curriculum just to be one click away, just to kind of translate yeah. that. And moment. the beauty of using Google Classroom with Google Meet is you can, like, I've already linked my classroom to its own individual Meet link. Yeah. So the kids will go to the same place every day every and day. click on that link and get into the live classroom. There's no email, there's no code, I know. there's no, it's, it's, the link is in your header and you just click on it and you're in. So that, amazing, I love that. It's been amazingly secure, and, and our kids then, and, and all of our lessons are, are safe and safeguarded, which uh, is one of the things I'm really excited about. Yeah, the Google that's classroom. important. Uh, this is an excellent question. I love this question. I'm going to say it right now. <laughs> what do parents do to report an absence? I love that question. There's two things we want parents to do. We want you to call your school and leave a voicemail or speak to a secretary. Or we want you to email the school, email the school principal or email the school secretary where we need to know. I, I need to know if your child is ill because that needs to get reported because the teacher is going to take attendance every single day. Because the message we're giving our families is we're back in school, folks. So every single day we need to know if something's going on in your child can't attend class. And for me, that means every session. Yes. Google <laughs> Classroom, uh, Google <laughs> Meet allows us to see who is on every session. Okay. So it doesn't mean, well, I'm just going to pick math today and only go from 10 to 11, and then I'm done. Nope. Every live session will be having attendance taken. Every session, every day. Write that down, parents. Every, every session, session. Every session, every day. Every day. Yep. <laughs> Here's a good one. Will second and, grade, and third grades have the same times? That's very likely. That those two grades will probably be grouped together at every school. Um, kindergarten and fifth grade, they'll have different start times. So it just depends on, on your school and when that schedule gets sent out. Uh, I do have a question for the teachers who are with us. Is um, When... When you're in, in distance learning and a child needs more help, a child is in your lesson and needs, just needs more assistance, what do you want that child to do? Do you want them to email you? Do you want them to just, because they might be a little bit shy about saying it in front of everybody. How will a child tell you, I just need a little bit more help? Well, another great thing about the Google Classroom is when a student turns in an assignment, I tell mine that it's my map to show me what they need. And what I like about Google Classroom is it gives the option for me to send a personal comment, and it also gives the option for the student to reach out to me in a personal comment to say, I'm stuck on number five, I don't understand it. And then at that point, I would invite them to a small group session with a few other students that might have had the same struggle. Um, maybe it would be one-on-one, -on -one, but that would be something that we would set up within our day to go ahead and meet that need. 
And I think we'll have the flexibility to meet individual needs and, and release the other students to, to do start the practice. And so that kind of classroom environment virtually is something that we're going to be able to maintain and recreate. And we just have some different technologies to do something that we would do in the classroom like we would for every kid. Right. Every like day. so we would use the little moon table, right, yeah. in an actual classroom and yeah. pull two or three kids and say, Hey guys, let's look at number three and four again together. And the rest of the room would continue working. Uh, so similarly, it, we could use breakout rooms or a, a second Google Meet window to meet with those three and release the others to practice and then check back in once we've done the reteach. And our students are going to have to be comfortable making the screen small, still being in class doing that work so that we can bring them back together. So there's some skills and things that our students are going to learn and gain. Um, so they're still in the classroom while they're doing their work and they can come back when, right. when we need them. So just because I'm online with your child, for example, doesn't mean they're going to be staring at the screen for the whole hour and a half. I set my timer just like I would if we were in a classroom and say, okay, I want you to work on this paragraph for 15 minutes. Ready, set, work. And I hit the button and then I'm there if somebody gets stuck and I'm watching their little faces working at the table that they're at just like I would if it was a physical classroom. Right. And then if somebody needs something, then I step in and help with that issue. And you know what I like about the explanation you gave is that I think it helps parents understand that you as the teacher, you're not talking for an hour and a half mm -hmm. straight. 20 minutes max because, at a time. Because you're doing, sometimes you're doing just a little bit of an explanation that leads to the kids going, now I get it. Okay, now I want you to do this activity because they're, it's fresh because mm -hmm. you just showed them the one example. Yeah, and we do so pair very, share. Yeah. Um, I've done pair share in summer school, and they like they record their answers on a little slide. And the, so I talked to my partner about X, and he said this, and then the other student responds back. Uh, they have sentence frames, and um, we want them talking just like we do in a regular classroom. Yeah. We want them learning with each other, from each other, and sharing ideas. It's not about Mrs. Viegas is gonna like sit in front of her computer and talk to you for four hours. That's, That's right. not what we are wanting to do. Thank you for saying that. We got a question in from the phone calls. We we're up to about 25 phone calls at this point. So thank <laughs> right. you for that, Ms. McCown. Um, we have, <laughs> will students with an IEB, IEP be supported? And I wanna tell you, go on our YouTube webpage because we had an entire session like this with the director of special ed, the coordinator of special ed, and Julia Blankenship, who's, who's also, also your coworker. I know. Go Huskies. In, in the house. <laughs> and, and Julia was incredible. And they just gave so many awesome answers. So for the parents who want to know more about how we'll help children with special needs, watch the other uh, town hall. It's listed there. It's 724 or July 24th town hall. Um, and it's got to this point, it's got about 600 views online. So we're excited about that. We want more parents to go and see it. Um, I have an issue with a parent who says, if a child has medical issues and can't attend class, will the school accommodate? And we want to assure parents, we'll always make accommodations for children with medical issues. Um, so we would want this family to call their principal and call our district nurses because those two people will be very important in helping you coordinate and uh, and basically come up with a plan to help the child. Just like I'm sure you've done over the years as a principal is understanding the medical needs of children and then working with the school nurse and the classroom teacher to say, okay, let's kind of fit it together for this child. Yes. Whatever they need. Uh, here's a question. What will PE look like? PE will be all done at your house because your kids <laughs> won't be at our school until we reopen. So you want to get your kids outside doing exercise. FYI, vacuuming counts. Yes. <laughs> hey, dusty, dusty. A lot of, of home-based activity. So we definitely want that to happen. I've got a question on RISE, and I'm going to take this one and uh, distance learning. So... The question is, what is the difference between distance learning and RISE? 
And here's the fundamental difference. The fundamental difference is that a family that chooses rise knows that they do not want their children to return when schools reopen. They want their children online. When you're in the RISE program, you'll meet with your teacher once per week for an hour. When you're in distance learning, you will be online with your teacher for up to four or five hours every day. So if your children is in distance learning, they could be getting 20 hours a week with their teacher. If they're in RISE, they're going to get one hour a week with their teacher. And let me explain why. It's because in RISE, you're doing independent work. You're not part of a class. You're on your own, doing your own assignments that are completely independent. Question. So your teacher has a third grader, a fourth grader, a fifth grader, and a sixth grader. So the teacher's not going to bring the class together because all the students are doing independent assignments. And that's why the teacher can devote one hour a week to your child. But not like in distance learning, Mrs. Villegas, you're going to have your fourth grade class. So those are your students. And sometimes you'll teach them all together. Sometimes you'll say, I'm going to teach four kids together. So that's, those are the two biggest differences. Um, and we have been reaching out to families who signed up for RISE to make sure that that's what they want to do for the rest of the year. Uh, and if you haven't gotten a phone call, feel free to call our Student Services Department. Uh, Kip Ward, our Director of Student Services, or Leticia Garcia, uh, his Secretary Support Services, they're both wonderful at taking those phone calls and answering questions that parents have. Um, I have a question here. When will student supplies be distributed? As soon as you say it, the first question comes in and says, when will we get it? <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Wilbur, you, you and, and Mr. Woods over at Calaveras AAA, you're going to have about a week next week to start to get yourselves organized and put together. Your secretaries will be back. Uh, August 10th, your teachers will come back on board. So we want kids to have their supplies and materials. What days... How many days will it take for you to get those things coordinated and, and have a pickup time for your school, just as, a, as an example? Well, I'm um, wondering about the, the numbers and the time frames and what we're going to learn about when we come back for the week. Yeah. Um, I anticipate uh, probably sometime in that second week yeah. having um, yeah. a drive through. and Like the 12th, 13th, or 14th, just before school gets open. Yeah. And it might take a couple of days, and then there'll be the, the, the people that need to come in individually, but uh, I think a couple of days we can take care of that. Yeah. It's hard to say with things like this because we don't know if it'll be 100 families or we don't know if it'll be 500 families. If it's 500 families, then it's going to happen over two days. If it's 100 families, then you can do it in an afternoon. So that kind of really just depends on, on the individual class. And then, Ms. Villegas, we're going to start the school year uh, where kids are going to have their teacher time be that four-hour period, and we've got extended afternoons. We built it that way so that teachers could actually hold individual conferences with each student and their parents. Um, have you thought about that yet, about what, what that might be like when you actually meet? Because you, this is the first time you're going to start as a teacher where you don't physically have your kids in front of you. Well, I'm fortunate that spring, uh, we had a good turnout in spring, and I was able to reach all of my students. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and then summer school gave further um, experience for myself. Um, I was just, we had a lunch, uh, my team and I today, just because we miss each other. Uh, but we did talk a little bit about school on Zoom. Um, and... Um, we talked about possibly uh, offering parents a phone call or an individual Google Meet if they want to see our face. And uh, one of our teachers expressed that she's not bilingual, but when she is face to face with a parent or the student can assist, then um, that's helpful. So she said, oh, well, I might suggest to my bilingual families that we do do a Google Meet so that we can see each other and yeah. um, the student can, you know, sit with the parent and hear everything at the same time and help with the translating. Um, 
So we have thought about it. And uh, during the spring, my partner and I called up to eight students daily. Um, we gave each student a designated time so that the parent knew Monday at 10, Mrs. V is calling Jose every Monday at 10. That's his time. And it was a check-in. How are you feeling about things? Are you understanding things? Do parents have questions? Um, do you, what do you need? And toward the middle to the end of spring, the students would get on and say, hi, Miss B, I went to the beach yesterday. It was so fun. Do you have any questions? Nope. Okay, awesome. I'll talk to you next week. So I, in the beginning, there was a lot of questions. And then as we moved on, it was more of a time to like share what was going on, how you're doing. And then, you know, it's a sh little bit of a shorter conversation, um, but it went well. So I'm anticipating that we will have the same kind of success. That's awesome. We got another special ed question. How will my child receive speech services? All of the services, including RSP services, speech services, uh, occupational therapy services, mental health services, they will all take place online. They'll all take place via Google Meet or via our uh, e-therapy uh, program that we're about to adopt where uh, it's secure and it's completely online. So if your child had speech services uh, last February, when we reopen school in August, your child will continue to receive speech therapy services. So thank you for that. Um, here's a good question. Um, I have a question from a parent that says, what if my child's babysitter can't get the student online? Will they have another time to see the lesson? In my case, and I don't know if this is going to be a district expectation or not, but um, my team and I recorded our live sessions every day, and then we could post it to our Google Classroom under materials. Mm -hmm. And it's, it wasn't just for students who might have missed the live session, but also for students who might be stuck and think, oh, Mrs. V said something today that might help me. Well, it's in their classroom, so they can go back and re-watch uh, my explanations or anything that a, something that a partner might have said that's going to help them remember how to do what they're doing. So um, that's how we handled the absences. It was, if you didn't make it today, please go in and watch the, the presentation of today's lesson. I think ours is going to be a little more traditional in the sense like in a normal day you miss something for a medical appointment or you're ill. We're going to make sure the assignments are readily available. Um, you're going to have a connection to the teacher with office hours. And uh, if you need extra help in terms of getting caught up, you can try to work it that way. But the materials, the lessons, and what we're teaching is all going to be clearly outlined. And uh, in terms of filming, there may be some, but in general, we're going to treat it like a, a regular school day. And you're going to have some work to make up, and we'll be there to help you. That's awesome. Uh, we got an HDLA question to all my Jaguars out there. Yeah. <laughs> Hoster Dual Language Academy. I'm going to say it in English and Spanish because that's what nice. we do at HDLA. Will HDLA provide Spanish and English classes each day? And the answer is yes or C. Sí. Um, vamos a enseñar en inglés y en español todos los días para los estudiantes de la academia en los idiomas de Hollister. So we'll be teaching in English and Spanish for our students in the Hollister Dual Language Academy every day. So thank you for that question. This is a hard one. I won't be able to answer it uh, today, but when will phase one end? So right now, there's a couple of reasons why we can't reopen. And one of the reasons is that we are in a county, San Benito County, in which the rate of infection is too high, in which the number of cases is too high and growing, and in which as a result of those coronavirus statistics, we fall under this category of having too high of a risk of infection. So there are a number of different criteria that would have to change in order for us to be considered to reopen uh, with students physically on campus. And I want to direct families actually to visit 
the County of San Benito website. There's just so many different resources and so much information. I don't want to misstate something or say it in the wrong way. Um, but what I can tell parents is that we will be on distance learning until at least November. Under no circumstances will we come back to school until at least November. At our next school board meeting, I'll be presenting the board with options of what dates to pick for when we could return. Because one thing that happens when you decide to reopen is, if we decided to reopen on October 15th, and we brought everybody back on October 15th, but within a couple of weeks, we started to have cases again, we would have to close down again and send everybody home. So just think about that as a parent. You've made all these arrangements to have your kids have daycare and, and be with neighbors and, and grandparents, and you've made these arrangements. Then the school district says, okay, we reopen, but then 10 days later, you're back at home. So our school board is very concerned about making a decision and then having to undo the decision in too short of a time frame. Um, so they want to set out these dates that are a little bit longer. So we say, we know we're staying on distance learning until at least the end of October, and then we'll reassess for November, and then we won't reassess again until January. So we'll give parents a lot of certainty knowing for the next three months, for the next two months, I know what to expect from the school. But as of today, I can't tell you when phase one will end. Yeah. Another question here is how long will teachers be online with students? It depends on the grade level and it depends on the day, but it's going to be somewhere between three and five hours a day each day, um, basically for every classroom in the district. Um, I have a question for um, our teacher here. I would like to know what you are most excited about going into this new school year. I am most excited about getting to know my new group of students. I have a lot of all about me activities planned and I've already kind of thought ahead to whatever our open house might look like. Um, I've created an all about me slide that each student will create and with like some visuals and words and then I'm gonna put them all together in a big presentation to share with, uh, with families and um, so I'm definitely excited about getting to know my kids um, and showing them that they can do this, mm -hmm. uh, that we are going to be with them every step of the way. Many of them are probably more tech savvy than a lot of the adults in their household. So just giving them the confidence and enough practice to uh, feel strong about their ability to do this. I'm excited about being together again and, and being able to sit with staff and build lessons and have kids uh, together in, in our classrooms. And I'm really excited about our new fourth grade class that we recruited. We have a group of uh, new Gators coming in. So we've got uh, that kind of time to, to come together in terms of our new school. Um, and I'm really excited about the, the chance that we have with the new tools and the training that we took that last week of school last year. To, to have our staff ready to start and, and to build and to show our community that we're, we're ready and, and we're excited about sharing and learning and growing and our kids are going to get some good things from what we have to offer. And uh, I'm really, I'm really very excited about getting together and, and being together. So summer was a little, a little too long, I think. Mm -hmm. It's always an exciting time of the year. Being a teacher, and especially being next to a teacher, <laughs> I taught for so many years and that was the one thing that I loved was the excitement of the different times or epochs of the of the year and this time of year falls coming and our students are coming and we're getting excited and trying to get ready and I'm going to get back with my teacher friends and um, for me in this position the excitement is really about being able to equip the teachers and the principals with all the things that they can do to get excited with the students and have that beginning of the year energy. It's a hard time right now, 
but there isn't any reason why we can't get excited together and begin to build up the momentum of a new year. Um, it's just so fulfilling to be able to see students be self-directed and excited about their learning and um, it's, it's, it's really a great time to be an education. I know that it doesn't feel that way all the time, but we're embarking on something new. It's exciting to be able to learn and try things out and figure things out together with our colleagues, with our students, with our families. We're all in this together and it's almost like um, it's a really unifying opportunity to um, re-engage ourselves with one another. I mean, that's just so exciting. So I won't keep going. <laughs> I could, but I won't. <laughs> Every person who answered that question said at least three or four things they're excited about. <laughs> I just want to point out they're super excited. <laughs> we have we have five, six questions I'm going to run through, one right after the other. Will students get to meet their peers in online classes? Yes. All of the students, when they're in those online classes, their teachers are going to do, they're going to start their lessons with good things. They're going to let kids uh, meet one another and get to know one another and that's going to be a big part of our uh, our program is we're adopting a program for kindergarten through fifth grade called Sanford Harmony it's a social emotional curriculum that we're going to provide to all of our teachers and all of our students and it's going to be a guide for us for the whole year and you put that together with capturing kids hearts um, it's going to be a really positive fun environment for our students Second question, when phase two opens, can parents enroll their kids in RISE, in Hollister RISE at that point? The answer is yes. Uh, we built the Hollister RISE Academy in a way where you can add more students to it. Um, so we will take parent interest at that time. Um, like anything else, it's based on space availability. So we wanna make sure parents get their applications in. Uh, but for those parents who would decide to re-enroll their kids in distance learning, uh, and then at a later date, say in November, say in January, you would decide, I want my child in RISE. I'm still not ready for my child to go back. We would take your application at that time. So thank you for that question. Uh, question here, what support will there be for parents that work full time and that have kids who stay at home? And I, I really think this is a great one for our principal and our, our teacher to answer where basically it's kind of like saying, I'm at work. What if my child needs help with their schoolwork when I'm at work? What, what can you share from your perspective as a teacher and from your perspective as a parent? Um, well, I am a teacher and a parent of a distance learner. So as a parent, um, my son was home. He's in middle school. Um, and my husband was there, but I'm the learning coach for a reason. Um, so... What I directed my son to do was do what you can after you've had your live sessions uh, and then what you can't do on your own after dinner, then we would sit and we'd go over where he got stuck. Um, if it's a technology issue, then I believe there's going to be an email or a phone number or a way for the student um, or whomever is caring for this. If it's an older student, they should be able to handle it on their own. and reach out and say, hey, I can't log in, help. Yeah. And then uh, one of my students from summer school said within 20 minutes, it, they were helped oh, and they were in. Good. So uh, we have a fantastic team of technology uh, specialists who are ready to field those calls, those emails, whatever it is, and get those kids in as quickly as possible. And you know what they'll do too? We've spent the last couple of months updating all of our technology systems. So. Let's say you, you emailed and said, I need help with this particular program. Let's call it Benchmark Universe with this particular problem. They'll actually do a video and send you the video. And then they'll save that video so that when you email us to ask that question, they it's answer right. your question, but they give you the same video. So now it's just one person's question is answering a hundred people's questions. Mm -hmm. So we really like the way that, that's kind of a cool thing about the way technology is forcing us to think like that. Mm -hmm. To say, hey, come up with some videos that you can use with more, instead of helping just one person. Whereas when you're doing it face to face, 
a technology person would only be able to help you and then would have to go and help somebody else if it were all in person. And that's kind of an interesting thing to, to realize because we're all forced to be more efficient online. Um, and then you have the principal's perspective. If you, you've got uh, 750 kids at your school, um, you know, when there are kids who are home alone and need help, what do you want them to do? Well, I think that if we look at the instructional piece differently than we did at the end of last year, we're going to have a lot of good adult supervision of the time the students are in the classroom and they're connecting with their teacher. Yes. I think if a kid has an instructional challenge, we're going to have teacher office hours and, and they're really going to have opportunities to reach out after school. There's time allotted for some of that individual time if in that lesson we didn't already pick up that there was something we needed to help with. But then the other part is we're here to help a lot more than that. I mean, we're still going to be providing food. We still have health services. We still have options for counseling. And, and it's just like any other thing. Uh, we're here to help, and we're going to take care of kids in any way they need help. And so um, I, I don't know how all of it's going to translate, but I know that as soon as the need arises, we're going to have a team of people at the school site, the district office, and the classrooms uh, to, to work and help because there are kids. Thank you. We've got a question on middle school advanced classes. We're having them. We're excited about it. We want those kids who are ready for that academic challenge to get that academic challenge and to be be prepared for their their end of year test and to be prepared for high school when high school comes calling for them. Um, we actually, I think we just got our last phone call and so that's going to be our last phone call. And we've gone through the list of questions from all of our parents and um, when I met with our special education team, um, we ended the session by basically saying, you know, you've got several hundred families that are watching now and a couple hundred more that are gonna watch over the next week. Um, Mr. Wilbur, uh, you've been uh, a principal here now, is it seven, eight years? Seven, eight, eight years. Eight years. Uh, you know this community, your kids went to school here. Your kids are students, your, your kids are school age. You know, you've got families that are watching out there. What message do you want to give families? What do you want them to take away from, from this conversation and in terms of distance learning? What, what's your message to families? Well, I think that anytime we have challenges or something that's different or difficult, um, I know from living in this community that we meet that challenge head on and we, we thrive. And because we're all together in this and taking care of our kids and we all value those things. I know all of our teachers and all of our families and all of our administration and support staff are, have that in common. Nice and so, so for us, um, oh. I think, it's okay. I think, I think that we are, we're going we're gonna to make sure that we take care of everyone and we're going to do a great job. And this community is going to come together like it always has and always will. And we're going to build new rapports, new relationships, and it's an opportunity to do things even better. And it's a great chance for Hollister to show the rest of the state and the rest of the country yeah, just how good we are. Carolyn? It's, it's an honor to be a teacher or a principal. And it, with it comes deep, deep level of commitment and responsibility. And, you know, all those years of being in the classroom or on campus or making sure every single student is safe and cared for and learning. As the Director of Educational Services, I want every student in Hollister to have the very best of the best because they deserve it and the teachers deserve it. So my role is to really make sure, because I've been in your shoes, that you have everything you need so that those students, our Hollister children, have the very best education available to them. For me, education is an equity issue, it's a justice issue, and every single student needs to be able to have a fair shot at the next level and the next level and the next level. And boy, this is really challenging me and all of us to really be creative together. And at first it's a little scary, so we can be scared and balk. Mr. Ochoa knows that at first I'm like, wait a minute. And then pretty soon I'm in there digging in and I'm excited and crazy wild about all the possibilities. So we're gonna look at possibilities together and never, never lower that bar ever because our children are ours, our communities and our, and our schools. So it's pretty exciting. 
Definitely. Um, I think just in a month's time from like scary in March to <laughs> super excited when my migrant summer school was starting, just that extra week of training and, and fine tuning um, my Google certification skills, reminding myself of what I already knew. Um, summer school felt very different than, oh my gosh, we're not going back to the classroom on Monday. What are we going to do? Um, and it's just going to be very important for parents and teachers to work together and to remember that no matter how we're presenting what we're presenting, it's always by name and by need. Every student is unique and we're going to meet their needs where they are and help them get where they need to be. I feel excited anytime I let them just, <laughs> just, speak, just speak their mind. Um, I have a message for families. Take the time to show your child something new, no matter how old they are. If they're a kindergartner, or if they're an eighth grader. Take the time to find something they haven't learned before and teach them something new at home. And look at the reaction on their face. Look at the, the sparkle in their eyes. And that's what you're gonna see the whole year because you're gonna have a team of people you're going to have people calling your house to make sure your child's online. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a teacher there five days a week, meeting schedule, lessons, work. You're going to have principals doing events like this, doing meetings with parents mm -hmm. online. You're going to have principals out there pan handing out books and computers and hotspots and devices. And the whole point of doing that is to have that gleam in the kids' eyes when they're learning something new. That's what our whole profession is about, is about teaching children new things. Mm -hmm. And this year isn't gonna be any different than any year that we've had before in that respect. In every other respect, it's gonna be completely <laughs> different. But in that respect, we're not gonna lose sight of that spark, that joy, that the just the beauty of teaching and learning so with that i want to thank all of our parents for being with us tonight within a, a couple of days you'll have the written faq with all of the questions it'll be in english and in spanish and i just appreciate all parents uh, being with us tonight don't forget next friday i'll be here i'll have a uh, principal of mays middle school diana herbst and principal of lad lane uh, elementary school Janine Ostoya, and we're still finalizing who our teacher representative will be, but it'll be the four of us, and we'll be excited, and uh, um, just thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Let's take a second.